Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, facial expressions today, and in particular, how machine learning is enhancing our understanding of natural facial behavior. Just to give a very brief historical background, uh, when the field began in the early 1990s, uh, the beginning of automatic facial expression recognition, of course, no one was using machine learning, and the prevalent approaches at that time were analytic approaches. And that was the state of the art when I started graduate school in Terry Sanofsky's lab. Now, from the mid-1990s through mid-2000s, machine learning approaches began to take precedence and were showing much more robustness. Around that time, we also showed that regarding the front-end features, Gabor filters were performing just as well as learned features that were learned through unsupervised learning, and they were a lot easier, took a lot less time to compute. Now, however, with deep learning, for the first time, we have learned features outperforming Gabor filters. Now, not only is machine learning improving our ability to recognize facial expressions, but conversely, now the, the resulting technology is changing our ability to understand the face. It's changing the science of the face. It enables measurement of facial behavior and dynamics that simply wasn't possible with the arsenal of tools that we had before. Uh, both manual coding and facial EMG have their limitations. And so now with automatic facial expression uh, recognition, we can get new information on how facial movement relates to underlying mental states. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm gonna to talk about two different studies looking at machine learning of facial movement to predict internal states, intentions, and decisions. The first study is a deception study where the goal was to distinguish real from faked pain. And the second study looks at decision making in neuroeconomics. And the goal is to predict financial decisions and to predict strategy change. First, I will show you a live demo of our system. This is a frame-by-frame -frame, uh, texture-based system. And what you'll see is detection two different ways. I'll smile. And you see the face box changes color uh, to detect my facial expression. And then over on the right, over here, uh, we see the, uh, the time course of, of the uh, separating hyperplane. So we have our frame-by-frame -frame signal gives us temporal information that we can subsequently process just to show you with some of the other expressions, sad and subtle sad, because natural facial behavior is sometimes subtle. Surprise. Now, natural facial behavior is often very quick, like that. Those are called microexpressions. Not necessarily subtle, but fast. Anger. Fear. Okay, disgust, and subtle disgust, and contempt. Contempt means unimpressed. Okay. Now, facial expressions are driven by two different motor pathways that originate in different parts of the brain. Deliberate facial expressions, such as when you smile to have your picture taken, those originate in the cortex, and they follow one pathway to the facial muscles. Whereas, if you're smiling because you're happy, it's an emotional facial expression, that originates subcortically in the basal ganglia, and that travels through a different pathway to the facial muscles. That has been known for quite some time. Now, these two pathways have different dynamic characteristics. So the deliberate pathway versus the uh, spontaneous pathway, the spontaneous pathway um, is faster, smoother, it's more ballistic, uh, it has shorter latencies, it's uh, more symmetric, et cetera. So we asked whether we can differentiate the forms of facial control using automatic facial expression recognition. And the task was real versus faked pain. So real pain uh, was cold presser pain, and cold presser pain can be induced by having you immerse your arm in ice water. So the task was to uh, have participants immerse their arms for 60 seconds in a bucket of ice water for real pain, 
For faked pain, the, ice wa the water was completely comfortable, it was room temperature, and they were instructed to try to convince an expert they were in pain. The facial expressions looked like this. One is real, one is faked. So uh, try to figure out which one you think is faked. Who thinks it's the one on the left? Who thinks it's the one on the right? It was actually the one on the left. So our human judges, we had 170 undergraduates look at these, and they were looking at the full videos. They weren't just looking at stills, and they were still at chance. Uh, they were 52% accurate on a two alternative force choice. They really couldn't tell who was faking it. So uh, we, uh, we measured facial expressions using an architecture that looks like this. Um, I won't go into the details. I'll just give you the basic overview that uh, we start with a front end, which is a frame by frame uh, spatial facial expression uh, recognition system. And that system detects 20 individual facial muscle movements. And this gives us a comprehensive uh, and objective description of what moved on the face. Now, after that system is trained up on large quantities of data, uh, when we pass video through it, we end up with a time course. And so the second layer of learning was uh, learning the temporal structure of these time courses. So to learn the temporal structure, uh, we use a simple uh, bag, bags of temporal features approach in order to get some invariance about exactly when that facial expression happened and yet still have a, a, a rich a uh, textual description of what that facial expression looked like when it did occur. So the basic results, again, our human observers were at chance. Uh, the machine learning system, uh, we included some f sequential feature selection uh, on which face facial muscles were included, um, and then tested that with cross double cross-validation to avoid overfitting on that part. And we achieved 85% accuracy with this system. So that was significantly better than the humans. And the details of the study were published in Current Biology last spring. But what was going on is that the humans, uh, our human judges, uh, partly they weren't noticing signals that were happening too quickly, and mostly they uh, didn't know how to interpret what they saw. The discriminative facial expressions included things like reduced variability that people were opening and closing their mouths with too much regularity. Those were the kinds of things that the machine learning system was able to pull out that differentiated the two systems. The second study looks at emotion and decision making. And in particular, um, it's looking at uh, whether we can predict decisions from facial expression. Facial expression may provide a window onto our decisions, and the reason is that the emotional parts of our brain, and in particular, the amygdala uh, appear to uh, drive that immediate gut response that is responsible for many of the decisions that we make. So we asked whether uh, we could predict decisions with automatic facial expression recognition. So in order to do this, uh, my postdoc, Filippo Rossi, uh, had people play a game. The game's called the ultimatum game. In this game, player one is given some money. Then player one gives some of the money, all or none, uh, to player two. If player two accepts, they both get the money, but if player two rejects, then neither gets any money. Now, according to some economic theories, the optimal solution is to always accept because you will get more money if you always say yes. It's a very clear rule. However, humans don't always behave optimally. They get mad. This guy's a jerk. I'm going to punish him and re reject his offer. So we asked whether we could predict rejection in this game from facial expression. So again, the machine learning system was compared to human judges looking at the same videos. And the architecture was very similar to the one that I just showed you. And the, machine, the humans were at chance. They could not project, predict rejection reliably, whereas the machine uh, was significantly better at 73% accuracy. It turns out that when people receive a bad offer, they'll show facial expressions of disgust, but that doesn't predict rejection. What predicts rejection is facial expressions of anger, as shown on the top there. So the humans were pay paying attention to the wrong signals. It was not only the wrong facial muscles, they were also attending to signals that were happening on the wrong time scale. They were paying attention to signals that were happening too slowly. And the way uh, Filippo measured this was to apply Adaboost uh, with two different goals or two different tasks. So first, 
he applied Adabus to ask which temporal frequencies contained uh, information about rejection, and that's shown in the pink. What is the most predictive range of temporal frequencies of facial expression? And the result was that uh, fast expressions on the order of a half a second were most predictive. But then he could turn it around and say, okay, now let's try to predict uh, what the human observer guesses are. And so when he did that, that was picking up slower, uh, slower temporal frequencies, uh, facial expressions that had an envelope of two seconds and even longer. So the human judges were paying attention to things that were too slow. Facial expression can also provide insights into reinforcement learning. And I'll just give you the take home messages from this part, um, that uh, facial expression provides a measure of the affective value of reward and of error, and it can be used to try to predict strategy change. The task in this study was uh, to play a one-armed bandit, and you could choose from four of these, and the payoffs of these four are varying over time. And so on each trial, you can choose the one that you think is giving the best payoff uh, based on your recent experience with it. So uh, what Filippo found was that absolute prediction error, so the, uh, whether the uh, payoff was higher or lower than what you expected, that was correlated with the amount of surprise that was shown on the face. In addition, uh, when people received more money than expected, it was correlated with joy. Less than expected was correlated with anger when they were playing a machine, but with disgust when they thought they were playing against a person. And more generally, automatic expression measurement provides a way to measure latent vari variables in reinforcement learning. It provides a way to measure the weight on the error, for, the, for example, and that error can be non-isotropic, depending on whether your error is positive or negative. So uh, when Filippo included facial expression in the reinforcement learning model, he found that he was able to improve change prediction accuracy by 14%. In addition, larger negative expressions predict, predicted more of a willingness to change strategy. So now in the last few minutes, I'm just going to just show you, give you some examples of commercial applications. We've been commercializing this system since 2012 through a startup company called Emotion based in San Diego, and it's because our system is based out of UCSD, uh, so we were all located there. Um, the commercial version of this system employs deep learning for the front end features, and uh, Josh Suskind is going to describe that system right after this talk. And what deep learning has done for us is it's enabled us to measure facial expression in the wild. It's provided us ro enough robustness that we can take this system out of the laboratory and apply it to a much broader range of applications than we could have before. So one application, the most straightforward one, of course, is audience response and advertising. However, we can also use the system uh, in retail to measure customer sentiment. We can measure uh, customer sentiment right in the store in uh, an aggregate and an anonymous fashion. And we, in fact, do have a pilot system uh, that's up and running and giving us interpretable results um, in a uh, fast food chain in, in just one example store. The system can also be used in medicine. Uh, it can de detect depression, and that's been shown empirically. And it can be used to quantify response to, to treatment and to cr screen for de depression. Right now, quantifying depression and response to treatment is, is done through, basically through questionnaires that you hand to the psychiatrist and to the patient. So this is giving us a numerical value now. We can also use the system to uh, measure the amount of pain in clinical settings. And we have an ongoing collaboration with Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego, where we've demonstrated the system is able to estimate the amount of pain post-surgery in children. Education is an area where this technology can have a big impact. And uh, here we see a, an example where the student in the middle, uh, we're seeing three different facial expressions that are related to learning. The student in the middle is looking distressed. The one on the left is engaged in her task, and the one on the right is looking away. These are the kinds of facial behaviors that can be measured uh, today using this technology and can greatly enhance online education by providing feedback as to how your students are responding to the material. So in summary, Automatic expression recognition technology is transforming the science of the face, and it's enabling empirical study of how facial movement relates to internal states. 
In the first study, we showed how uh, we detected fake pain better than human observers, and we detected uh, which neural system was driving the facial movement based on the dynamics. In the second study, we showed that facial expression predicted decisions, strategy, cha strategy changes, and reward prediction error. And this system has broad application across many fields, including advertising, retail, healthcare, and education. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.